it only took about three months or so, but hey ho, that's how it goes. My name is Maivor and I come to you from Vasa on, in Western Finland. And this is my crafty space. Welcome to join me and talk about some knitting. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Maitessa and on Instagram as Stikkamitjarta. And uh, this, this YouTube channel is called Stikkamitjarta Needs My Heart. Um, I want to talk to you today about, uh, I mean, we're already into February, but I wanted to look back a little bit and talk about my most worn uh, projects or my most worn knitted uh, things of the last year of 2021. Which things did I enjoy uh, wearing? Which things did I enjoy making the most? Um, and, and I also want to share some of my fails, if you like, or things that didn't perhaps turn out the way I wanted to and that I have perhaps um, even uh, ripped out or frogged and um, or uh, repurposed in some other way. Uh, so I want to I want to kind of show you the best and the worst. And and I also um, have some ongoing projects that that I want to show you. Um, but so this is this will be a sort of a, a, a cavalcade um, of a lot of different projects. Um, and I want to sort of talk about it in a more general sense as, as to how, how things, how my knitted things fit into my wardrobe. Because that's, that is a kind of important um, issue for me. That, that they have, that they find their use, that they have a, a utilitarian sort of purpose. And that they, they're not just um, drawer, drawer warmers. Uh, that they, they actually also find find their use on me or perhaps on somebody else. So, um, and I, I just want to say that today I have one sheet screen over there where I can see myself. So if I'm looking down, that's because I have one screen there. And then I have one screen over here <laughs> um, where I have my kind of show notes, where I have my Ravelry page, where I can sort of... Um, Kind of check check things where who's who's the designer and things like that. So I, if I'm flicking a bit over here and there, that's that's why. And if there is time, if I don't talk too long about all of the knitting, I will also talk a little bit about my newfound love of sewing right at the end. But if you're not a sewist, it's perfectly fine to you know just skip that part and just. Um, enjoy your my knitting talk. Um, today I'm wearing my Love Note sweater, which uh, was one of my finished projects of 2021. It and I have worn this a fair bit, so this is definitely one of the favorites. Um, it has uh, the three quarter length sleeves, and it is fairly cropped, so it ends right at my waist. And it's not as oversized or boxy as maybe um, the design uh, says, but I, I'm quite happy to, to wear it like, like this. And this uh, uh, is made out of a recycled, or um, not a recycled, but a repurposed yarn from a store-bought sweater that I had, that I w bought and wore ages ago, but then I ripped it. <laughs> and it actually had quite good lamb's wool in it, so I used that and with one strand of uh, Rowan Silk, Kid Silk Haze mohair. So that's my, my love note. Um, now looking back at 2021, uh, Ravelry says that I finished 22 projects. Six of those were sweaters or of some sort. Um, and then there were quite a few socks, a couple of shawls, and um, a few other bits and bobs. Um, Mainly, I'm going to talk to you about about the sweaters today, um, and and just highlight a few things that uh, that were were my favorites during the year. And now I have a cat visiting. <laughs> She's nervous. Who am I talking to? Uh, okay, let's let's just jump right in. This is. I put my, my uh, uh, 
sweaters on hangers today, thinking that maybe that would be easier to, to show. Let's see if I can get it in the right spot. Now this is uh, one of my absolute favorites of the year, the Calliope sweater. I have worn this lots and lots. Now this is a fluffy um, silk mohair blend or silk mohair mix uh, sweater. Um, it's, I find it that it's really hard to catch um, the way it really looks on camera because it has this deep luster. Uh, but when I try to photograph it or when I film it, I, I find that the color just becomes really flat. Um, so maybe you'll just have to imagine, but I'll, I'll show it a little closer. Um, so this, that's the yoke. It has sort of a deep ribbed yoke. And then it has raglan sleeves. And then it also has this deep rig ribbing um, at the cuff and right at the bit, sort of the hem there. So, um, and this is a, a sort of a boxy, a bit oversized, but not, not too, too boxy anyway. Really warm, warm and very comfortable sweater. Now the pattern is um, Calliope by Espastrico. It's a free pattern, I think. Yeah. Very good basic pattern. Could be used for a lot of things. Um, and I just wanted to show you the yarn. Let's see where I... Yeah, here they are. Just the yarns, the yarn, um, yarns separately. Then maybe you um, get a better idea. So this is um, Wilmy One's Fibers uh, BFL sock yarn, this one. And then this is uh, Phil Colana Tilia silk mohair. Um, and somehow I think that looking at them like this, it's kind of interesting that it actually turns out like this. There's quite a bit of difference, don't you think? The blue yarn is not as light as it shows on the screen now, but it's still, it's fairly um, light teal, but it gets, it, combined with, with the silk mohair, it, it becomes this really, really dark, deep, deep color. And this is a BFL, did I say that? A BFL sock uh, and in the colorway Stormshare's Maya. Yeah, so really happy with that one. Lots of wear. It is very warm though, so if you're out and about or, you know, moving around the house, cleaning or something, I have to take it off because it just, it starts steaming. Okay. And then another one of my favorite wares of the year that now this one, I think actually I finished the year before. So this is not a 2021 make and I have shown it before, but it's worth showing again because it's definitely one of my most used sweaters. This is the Tan Tan sweater. Um, let me see what the name of the designer was. Um, just a sec. The Yamagara was the name of the designer. Uh, and this has just been in the wash, so it's a little crinkly. I washed it on the wool cycle in the machine and that worked well. Um, it has this, it's also a very simple, simple um, design. This yoke sweater with this decorative, very simple stitch uh, patterning and um, it's in, made in a in Ruskan Lehti Polworth um, wool or yarn sock weight but it doesn't have any nylon in it I don't think so that's that is the uh, the tam -tam. Now, when looking at it like this, I see that there is a bit of sort of fading and a little bit of felting right here under the armpits. Um, and there is that annoying hole, which I <laughs> tend to get when picking up the stitches there, but doesn't really show when I'm wearing it. But even though it's a super wash yarn, it has felted just a little bit over there. So I don't know, maybe at some point I will need to think about whether that is an issue that needs uh, some attention. But a very, a very wearable garment goes with pretty much anything. Now, another um, 
a favorite from last year, uh, which, which I spent a long time making. Um, but w once it was finished, I have really worn it lots and lots. Is this um, Windy Fields shawl. Now, how do I get this to show properly? Um, it's really long. It's about two meters, I think. Um, and it has this uh, sort of wheat, wheat field like um, lace pattern all over it. Now the color, it's, it's a much more uh, sort of charcoal gray color than the, the uh, light. The lighting just turned really bad because it started snowing voluminously outside, which makes the sky much darker. So now, now even though I'm filming in the middle of the day, uh, the light is not perfect. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, but this I have used a great deal because it's such a great um, warmer, neck warmer, shoulder warmer, just snuggling up um, shawl. Uh, it's made from from alpaca uh, lace uh, uh, cascade lace alpaca. Let me just check the, the yarn. You see, I'm I'm well prepared. <laughs> I haven't written anything down. Um, windy fields alpaca lace. Cascade Yarns Alpaca Lace um, and the designer is Mariot Lund Rahkola and this is a pattern that appeared in the book uh, 52 Weeks of Shells. Um, and I, I, I wear this a lot just inside if I'm working and I'm, I get a little cold around the shoulders I will just throw, throw this on. I've worn it outside with my wool coat, works really well. Um, yeah, so the, the only thing um, and that's that's not that's just the nature of of this kind of pattern and this yarn is that when knitting it it was actually quite sort of wide but when you wear it it kind of stretches lengthwise which makes it much narrower so now it doesn't look I think maybe if it's about 40 centimeters across now looking at it all I'm showing you the wrong side um, but when knitting it it felt much wider um, but it stretches and it also because there is it's really long so so it stretches uh, lengthwise so if if anything if i could have changed anything about it i would like it to be a little bit bit wider still so that you could better get a better coverage over your shoulders but hey you can't have everything and it is very stretchy i mean i mean the pattern is very stretchy so sometimes i find myself sort of stretching it out and pulling it out a bit um, and or waving it <laughs> to, to get it to stretch a bit sort of widthwise um, and um, I haven't blocked this one I haven't blocked it open because um, well in the pattern it, it said that they hadn't blocked the, the sort of uh, the uh, the sample in in the pattern uh, and also because if you want to sort of recover the 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 texture, the sort of fullness of, of these uh, little wheat stalks or, or noops here, um, it's it's better not to block it, was, was the idea, I think. So I haven't blocked it and I think I'm quite happy um, to, to wear it like this more, where it has more of a fluffy feel. But you could, of course, block it and then perhaps you could get a bit more width out of it but yeah for now it's it works really well as is yeah and then uh, one more uh, project that I want to show you but that I'm that I don't have actually physically here but I will put a picture up somewhere here uh, and that is not one that I have worn myself or it's not for me it's for my husband uh, and he has worn this sweater a lot. Uh, it has become a real favorite of his. Um, I'm just gonna bring up, up the sort of uh, specs here so that I can tell you everything about it. It seems I started it in January and finished it in May last year so he has worn it about six months and it's beginning to show somewhere 
um, around the sleeves and the cuff. So I'm cuffs. So I'm I'm thinking at some point I may need to look at that to see if the cuffs need perhaps a little bit of of um, strengthening or um, reshaping. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, anyway, this is the Wintergrena sweater. It's a design by Stina Holgard Johansen. Um, I think maybe it was in one of the Yarbo design collections of last year. I think so, yeah. Um, and it's, um, it's a very simple saddle shoulder uh, design, nothing extra about it at all. But I think that's, for a man, that's exactly the way he wants it. It's very comfortable. It's knit in Isagari yarn uh, Merilin, which is uh, merino and uh, linen. Uh, very uh, soft and nice on the skin. He's very sensitive to anything that's prickly, um, which is a bit ironic because I just started knitting a sweat, let loppy sweater for him. But yeah, we'll get back to that. Um, so um, yeah, this has really been a favorite of his. He wears it all the time. So a good, um, a good, very good uh, all over uh, basic every day, but also one that, you know, works for, for going out with, with people, <laughs> which we don't do that. We haven't done that much during the last year, but it's perfectly good for when you're having friends over or meeting someone for dinner. So, um, that has definitely been one of the, the, uh, my best knits during last year. Now I knit that one out of the, the Isagi yarn and I bought, when I bought the yarn, I bought a, sweat, a sweater quantity for a men's, um, men's um, sweater. Um, but when I had finished it, I had, I had uh, so much yarn over that I, or left, that I realized that I could probably make one more piece out of that yarn. And the piece that I made is one that <laughs> I haven't worn at all. So this is one of those, one one of those things where, where um, I made it last year. I finished it, and it is beautiful, if I say so myself. But I haven't worn it, and I will explain to you just now. But first, let let me just show you. This is the oh, let me see. This is the um, it's the Anna, from the Anna Johanna book, uh, Strands of Joy. And it is called Calm, a Calm uh, dress actually. Uh, and I've made it into a tunic. And I I have short sleeves, and then it ends with sort of it just flares out, um, and it ends in uh, sort of right at mid hip. No, not mid hip, mid thigh <laughs> is what I'm gonna say. Um, and it has this sort of color work on the hem and around the yoke. So a really nice, I think this this is really nice and it is in the same Merlin yarn as my husband's um, sweater and then I have um, the contrast yarn here is a uh, Kera sock yarn which I have used for several other projects and I used every last scrap I think of the yarn in this one. I, I made it as long as I, I could make it with, with the yarn uh, and I used up all of it. So that's why it has um, the short sleeves. Uh, because I had to decide if I wanted to have long sleeves or more length at the hem. And I prefer to have more length at the hem. Um, now, the reason that I haven't worn this is not because it doesn't fit. It fits beautifully. It looks really nice on. But you need to have some sort of uh, bottoms with it. <laughs> because it, it, it's, um, it's a tunic. You need tights or you need pants, trousers with it. And I don't have anything that fits or that goes with it, which is just stupid. Because um, I would like, I would either like, well, thick top tights, uh, but they would need to be in the right color. And this inky blue gray color is actually really hard to find things that go with. Most things are too bright. If you go for the sort of blue scale, it's too bright. Or if you go to, through to uh, the gray um, end of the spectrum, uh, it's too gray somehow. Um, so finding the right color to go 
with this is actually really hard. I have um, I've tried to match it up with some of the things I already had in my wardrobe and felt that no, this doesn't work. I even bought some fabric um, that I thought would go with it. No, it didn't go at all. <laughs> um, so, and truth be told, I haven't been uh, clothes shopping at all this year, so I haven't brought it to a store and actually looked at the options available there. Um, because, well, it's not the things you've been doing for the past couple of years, really. So, this one is kind of still waiting for its inauguration, <laughs> you know, and for its matching, its matching bottoms. Now, you might think, well, you could wear black. Yes, I could, but I have become fairly particular about color, color and color combinations lately. And I feel that black often kills things. It kills the colors around it. It can sometimes, it, it can work in certain um, situations and in certain um, combos, but generally I really shy away from black. Uh, so I have tried this with black ties, tights and I feel, no, I don't want that. I don't want to wear it with black. I feel it deserves something that brings out the color of this better than black does. So, um, yeah. <laughs> if you're picky, then this is what happens. You Things end up on, on the bottom of your on the drawers instead. But I will find a solution. I promise you. And, and at least, I, I, I don't think I've even put this one up on my Instagram yet, but once I do, and I find the, the perfect bottoms, you'll be the first to know if you're following me on Instagram. Okay. That was the call tunic. Now, um, let's talk a bit about um, socks. Um, I'm not going to show you all, <laughs> all of my favorite socks. I have lots and lots of handmade, so handmade socks that I wear and um, that I circulate in my in my daily life all the time. And uh, I realized that during the past year, I have used store bought socks, sort of cotton regular socks a lot less than I had previously. Um, because I noticed that I, I bought a, a pack of, of new socks, you know, you buy a packet of five, um, because I, I thought, you know, I, I will be needing these soon because my other ones are wearing out. But I haven't even opened that pack yet. So I have really, it seems, switched to, to uh, wearing my handmaids a lot more. Um, and so far, I don't think I've had one pair during the last year that have actually, that I've worn holes into, but then I have circulated them. Um, so I haven't worn the same pair, maybe for, for the same amount of time that perhaps you would wear your cotton socks uh, during a year. Um, so, so far, I'm, I'm, it's looking good. Um, and I just, but I just wanted to kind of to post a couple of socks or to show you a couple of socks um, that have become particularly um, loved <laughs> during during the past year for some reason. Now the first uh, pair is actually on my feet right now, and I'm not going to show you that. So I will put up a picture of them. And uh, these were. They were a make from, I think, 2020, so they're, they're not that recent, but I have been wearing them a lot. They were in my box of socks, so at some point last year I took them out and I started wearing, wearing them. Um, and I have, and somehow, always when I look down on my feet, like right now, I think, wow, those are some pretty socks. <laughs> and it's, it's just something about the color combinations, the yarn, the sort of variegation of the blue, um, and and the sort of pink and the blue and the and the sort of calm white or cream base all of that is it's just it's just pretty it's just appealing to the eye uh, and to top that off they have really great fit um, and really uh, nice um, um, they're really nice and warm uh, the base is uh, or just let me just say the name of the pattern is <laughs> it's sock number 14. It's by Kerstin Balke from one of her uh, sock books. Um, and um, I could perhaps point out that in 
this pattern, I have reinforced the heel with an extra strand of, of thin um, lace yarn, which means that I have two strands of yarn in the heel. And I feel that that is actually, because if I look at them now or feel I, I the, the heel is not worn at, at all. Um, with, and I, I tend to wear out, wear my heels. I wear holes in my heels um, first. So heels are the first place where I get holes in my socks. Um, but because uh, I was able to put that extra strand in, um, of yarn into that heel, it has lasted really well, even though I worn them a lot. So those are um, one of my favorites. And then another favorite that I, I wanted to, to show you uh, is, is uh, perhaps a bit, <laughs> is one, a pair that I wasn't expecting to like as much as I have done. Uh, now these are the, the Picnic Blanket Socks by Helen Stewart from the Handmade Socks Society 4, I think, which I made last year. And this was a pattern, when I got it, I thought, well, not too, not terribly exciting. Um, and it's very simple. It has this sort of ruffle thing <laughs> here uh, on the cuff. And other, other than that, it's just a plain, plain um, stockinette sock. But... These are surprisingly nice to wear. Somehow, when you when you wear this, this kind of sort of scruffles about a little bit, falls down on, on the, the cuff or on your um, ankle. And that feels really nice. The fact that it doesn't sit sort of uh, tight, smooth on your on your leg is actually it's actually really nice. It, you, you get a bit, it's a bit of that 80s vibe, you know, <laughs> when you had these aerobic socks that had these long, long sort of uh, cuffs that you and that, that you push down and then you had this sort of fluff around your ankle. It has a little bit of that, but it, it's actually surprisingly nice. Um, so, so I have worn this a lot and I also really like looking at these when, I, when I'm wearing them because I think this, this yarn combo is so nice. And the, the, the speckled yarn is Roa Selmo Salmo um, in the colorway One Hapika, I think, and it's a wool wool yarn, so it's, I mean, a wool sock yarn, wool polyamide sock yarn, so it's not, it's not a merino yarn. And I think I actually prefer, prefer um, socks, wearing socks that are not merino. I have lots of merino socks because, of course, I have all those beautiful hand-dyed, hand-dyed yarns, but when it comes to comfort and warmth, I think you can't beat a wool, wool yarn. So I really like, I really like the feel of the wool yarn, and and uh, and I also really like how this uh, speckling has turned out on this one, and it's contrasted with a regia color line, color line um, yarn, also a sock yarn. I have another pair with, made with that. I will show you in just a sec. Yeah. So, those were my sort of favorite socks of 2021. Um, now, let's see, what do we have next? Well, I, I'll just, speaking of socks, I'll just show you this other pair that is actually my first finished make of 2022. I'm, I cast these on on Christmas Eve. Um, well, simply because I felt after all the <laughs> Christmassy stuff, I, I, it was nice to, to cast on something new and, and, and inspiring. And so I, and then I knit these really fast because they were such fun. And the, here they are. Um, these are the Kamebornia Heart of the Forest socks. I think she had a knit along for them. This is the very pretty heel. Gusset, which is underneath the heel. Uh, if I just try and um, open them up like that, that's how they look. Yeah, so an overall uh, stranded color work project. And here is the color line yarn that I was sh just showed you in the other pair. So it has this ombre effect. So it, the color changes. Um, along the way. So they're not identical. They have color, the color changes sort of um, like that, but it, it changes gradually and, and sort of very beautifully, I think. 
works really well in this kind of pattern. Uh, and it's combined with a um, hand dyed yarn by Johanna Gahn, a local dyer, um, in the colorway champagne, I think. And I think this colorway, the color line, the Regia color line yarn is called, the colorway is called Tulip. So, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're not on blockers, so they're a bit, yeah, but a fun, fun make and a really beautiful pattern with the trees. Um, so some new favorite socks for 2022. Um, yeah, and then one more thing that I want to sort of uh, point out or highlight from from 2021 is my my uh, four blankets, which actually uh, is the reason probably that I don't have as many f finished projects as maybe I had the year before because this one took a lot of time. But it was so worth it and it was such fun and I loved it and I love the finished product. So I folded it up because it's it's uh, kind of big. So this is the four four uh, knitted oh no crochet. Now I have to learn to say that word. The crochet blanket uh, called four. It's by a, um, a South African designer. Um, what was her name again? Something about with sunshine. Where are you? Oh, sorry. Now what? Why don't I find it now? Oh, there we are. Hooked on Sunshine was the name of her or her designer name. So you this you started it from the middle and then you then sort of knitted your way out and it's used in hub. I've used the hobby. A hobby yarn, a cotton yarn, and then some uh, repurposed yarn, that cotton blend yarn that I had in my stash. And I love how the colors sort of um, fade or darken a bit towards the outside or the, out the edge. And then it has all these beautiful different kinds of techniques and uh, stitches and uh, whatnot. All of them were new to me, but the description was very, very good. So it wasn't hard, actually, at all, making it, even though I really had no experience uh, with this kind of crochet project from before. So really loved, really, really enjoyed making this one. And um, I have it sitting on a chair um, so that I can just look at it, or I will Wear, wear it, not wear it, but have it um, sleep under it, take naps under it in my sofa. It's more of a summary, um, summary uh, weight, <laughs> not a summary weight, but it's cotton, so it's not as warm as it, a woolen or even a fleece blanket. But it's it's weighty, it's quite heavy. So when you you have it, you lie down and you put it over you, it's a bit like, you know, having these weighty duvets that are supposed to calm you. And I do feel that this has a bit of a calming effect as well. Yeah. So I love that. One of the highlights definitely of my my uh, crafty year. Uh, and I do have this other uh, blanket also, which I started from wool scraps or wool uh, sash yarns, which I haven't finished yet. Uh, nothing wrong with, with that. Um, I just, it was more, I kind of got stuck on, on the color combinations at the end there. <laughs> so that's why, why it's kind of hibernating at the moment. But, uh, and that is a completely different style because it has all the colors just, but, but it's a great stash buster and, and that will be just fine when it's finished too. But it's, it's uh, resting at the moment. Yeah. So let's see now, um, then let me talk a bit about the fails or um, the least favorites or the things that didn't go perhaps as planned. Now, where do I have some fails? Well, well let, me, let me just first put up a picture actually, now that I remember. It's not a very good picture, it's, it's a, a work in progress picture, but it's just one of uh, to show you what, what I started working on and why I didn't um, finish it. Or I actually did 
finish it to the point where I had only to sew in the ends. But just the other night, I ripped it out completely because I realized, no, this is not going to work. I'm not going to wear this. I am not going to enjoy. I'm not going to like it, having it on me. And this is a summer uh, sort of sweater. It's a cotton linen blend, um, the yarn. And it's, um, it, it's a perfectly nice yarn, which is why I have now repurposed it, because I'm, I intend to make something else with it. So I've put it in a bath and then I've just taken it out to try and straight, to straighten it because it was very curly. And then I, I'm good to go <laughs> for another project. But the reason I, I um, ripped it was one, it was too beige. <laughs> now I'm not a beige person at all. But I wanted to make something that was a bit beige, but with the stripes, with the sort of colorful stripes. Um, but it ended up too much beige and too little of the co coral color. So I felt that, no, this is too beige. This is not me. I don't want that much beige. But um, so that was one thing. But the main thing was really the fit or actually the shoulder. The shoulder construction, I used a pattern called Revival by Anke Strick um, and she uses the contiguous shoulder um, technique, which is incredibly clever. Um, I love how, how you grow the shoulder sort of <laughs> down this way um, when, you, when uh, uh, making it. But with that cotton yarn, which doesn't stretch, it, what happened was you got this sort of, you get this sort of slightly pointy tip of the shoulder here and that ended up too high, which means that, and, and you couldn't really stretch it out because it, the yarn didn't have enough give. So you, you ended up with, with the point of the shoulders too high and, and this sort of a bit of a slight pucker around that sort of angular tip of the shoulder, if you know, if you kind of get my picture. Um, so that, that just gave the whole sort of, um, yoke section, uh, a, an uncomfortable and not a very flattering look. And I felt that, no, I can't, I don't think that blocking would help. Um, so I just, I just uh, thought, no, better to start again. Gör om, gör rätt, as we would say in Swedish. Do it again and do it right. And this time I am going to... Um, I probably will use the stripe, the stripe effect again, but I might... But I will use more of the coral and I might even add some... Some... Um, um, some lace or something that make it, to make it a bit more airy, because I think it would actually um, look better than this one was was a bit snug as well. The fit was a bit snug. So yeah, um, watch out, watch this space to see what possibly happens with that one. Um, and another summer, summer project. Oh dear, yeah. let's see now here, uh, where I'm a bit in two minds still what to do with. Is this ginga top, which is finished, I think. Yes, it's finished. Um, and it has all these lovely details. It's really a very, very well constructed pattern. I love how it looks uh, and I love the yarn. It, it, it's a hand dyed yarn by Wool Me Once Fibers, which has mer merino wool and a bit of linen in it. Um, so all in all, all those are good things, <laughs> but I think I've come to the self-realization that wool, merino wool against my skin in summer is not a working combination. I don't want, um, I don't feel comfortable when, when, when the weather is warm and my body heat is warmer um, to wear um, wool against my skin that that just it just yeah it's not me it's not I don't think that I would get the wear out of it that it would that it deserves really so my question now is what to do 
with this one. One option would be to grow on the sleeves to actually make it um, long, to give it long sleeves. Now that could work. Um, or to simply rip it out and make, some, make something else with the yarn. I have quite a bit of this yarn left, which means that I could make a long sleeve sweater probably of a different design. Um, I'm thinking maybe a wrap cardigan. Wouldn't that be kind of nice with this? Maybe with some cables? Hmm? Yeah, so this is, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm still undecided about this, but I, I don't think that it will um, live on in this particular form. Now, this is who I am as a knitter. Um, I rip. If, if things don't um, go my way, if I find that I'm not getting the use out of, out of the garment that I was intending, I will most likely rip. I know people have different strategies for this. Some people um, maybe gift, uh, gift their, their uh, knitted items. I don't feel that I really have. Uh, people that um, are my size that I could gift <laughs> gift to um, and or some people will just bury things at the bottom of the drawer thinking you know maybe one day I will love it but I don't do that I feel that I would rather I don't want to have that bad conscience about it I would rather just start from scratch um, but we have different we're different there and we have different sort of uh, strategies for how we how we deal with failures if you like but I don't see it as a waste of time in any way that I've made a, I've made a complete garment that has turned out not the way I wanted it because I have still enjoyed knitting it and I have learned things along, along the way it's been an enjoyable process and the fact that I get to do it again yeah I get to enjoy the process once more so as long as the yarn's nice. If the yarn's terrible, then I will, um, I will perhaps reconsider another option. <laughs> but as long as the yarn is nice to work with, um, I'm, I'm happy to knit with it again. Yeah, so that brings me actually then to another project, which I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put that up on the hanger here, um, which is not one, I finished it, I think, uh, last year, but I knit it the year before, and it has been, that this has been at the bottom of a drawer, I'm sorry to say. Um, let's see if maybe this works better. If you can see it like that. This is the Whippet cardigan. Um, also by Anke Strick, I think. Let me just check that. Oh. Uh, how hard can it be to find something when you're actually looking for it? There we are. Yeah, Anke Strick. This I've knitted out of Holst, super soft. Um, and this is also, also has that contiguous shoulder uh, construction and here it works really well. It's not a problem here. Um, and this is a cardigan with so many beautiful details and it has such nice construction and it it was really enjoyable to knit in every sense of the word, but it doesn't sit right on me. The sleeves are too narrow. Uh, it has this sort of, um, does that show at all? It has this sort of um, half cable thing going on at the sleeves and at the sort of, um, bottom of the of the body uh, which kind of pulls I think pulls the, the fabric together which means that the sleeves are really really narrow and they 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 do they just sit like you know a second skin right here and which means that it's that it's not a cardigan that you really wear um, anything under you could wear a, a, a t-shirt or a sleeveless top and I, I guess I planned it I meant it as a summer cardigan anyway but the sleeves oh no i don't that they're not they're not nice <laughs> um and the other thing 
and this is something that I have learned about myself. Um, is is how it has this, and uh, when it comes to to fit and how what things fit on me and what they the effect they create on on my my particular body shape. Um, it has these sort of um, dipped hem right at the front here, which means it's a little, little bit longer and a little bit wider, I think. Yeah, this band here widens a bit towards the base. Um, and when, when I wear this, what it does is it creates these, this triangle effect. So that it fits, it's slim here and then it sort of widens towards the hip. Now that is not a flattering shape. And some, I, I find that everything that I, that is open, that is not, <laughs> if it's a cardigan that's open, that it tends to happen for me. It, it just flows like that, you know, and out. And that just, it doesn't look nice. Um, it, it just no, does nothing for my body because I have a really short torso um, and I'm, I'm short in general and I have a really short torso. So I need to emphasize the sort of, um, the, the smallest part of my waist uh, and not have something pull your eyes out towards the, the hips. So that's one thing that's happening with this cardigan. Sorry, uh, well, I was cut off there. My video was cut off there for a bit. Anyway, so I'm, I'm undecided with this one as well as what to do with it. I could rip it out and I could certainly repurpose this yarn. Um, but then on the other hand, um, this I could consider gifting if I find found someone that um, would that this would fit. It would I think it would have to be perhaps a, a younger <laughs> a younger person with slim arms. Um, so yeah, um, not not quite sure about this one either. But I'm not gonna wear it myself. That's I think that's for sure. And I think the important lesson I learned with this one is that I I need to stay away from those those kinds of of um, shapes, uh, designs that have these sort of uh, open, billowy um, hems, because they don't they don't work for me at all. So that was a good thing to learn, at least, and it was an enjoyable project. So no regrets, but we'll need to think of something with that one. Okay, what else do I have? I think maybe let, let me just let me just check my my very sort of unwritten notes here to see if there's anything else that I um, want to highlight. I think no. Apart from that, I was pretty happy with most of my stuff last year, and I most of it has found its use. And and um, yeah, so let me just so let me um, continue with some. Uh, stuff that's on the needles. Or perhaps this one I showed you the last time. It was a little less finished then than it is now. This is the Pirta cardigan from Anna Johanna. Johanna Anna Johanna's book, Strange of Joy. Uh, and that now I have um, finished all the sort of the sleeves and the body. And I have, I have, I have knitted one of the button bands with the button holes. Um, and I am procrastinating about the other one. Uh, it's something about picking up stitches in finished knitting that I really don't like. I don't like knitting button bands. I think it is a pain in the B. Um, so I have one button band to knit and then the buttons to sew in and then it's finished. But I'm not just, I'm just not getting there. <laughs> um, so yeah, but other than that, I am very happy with this. I think it is a really, really pretty, pretty design. And I think I love it how, I love how the colors um, work together in this, in this uh, yarn with the, uh, the, uh, so sort of sage green yarn is Vuona by Yellow Villa, a Finnish 100% wool. And these two um, are Tukubul Hakama yarn. 
also a fingering weight, 100% finish wool. So this is well on its way. I'm this is meant to be a sort of summer out door cardigan because I, as you may have, you may remember, I planned it to go with my gardening pants. So there's no. There is no rush. Now that I'm looking at it, I see it, I've been lying. I have the pockets to make still. These are the pocket openings there, so I still have to make those. So it's not quite finished. But haven't worked on it for a, a bit now, but I will get to it eventually. Yep, so that's uh, one project. The other sweater project that I have is um, also one that I'm not... <laughs> enjoying terribly but I do think that the finished product will be really nice and this is the reed sweater from a sundness um, uh, pattern booklet which I bought when I went to TT2 last summer um, and this has this is sort of uh, this really airy kind of sweater with lots of holes in it so it has this kind of stitch pattern patterning all the way so very simple it's a circular the, the yoke is circular and the, the sleeves just continue the same pattern and then it's finished off with with a bit of, of ribbing so a very sort of simple um, construction but actually looks really good on when I've, I've tried it on, it actually looks really good and I think it will be a really nice sweater just to pull over um, whatever uh, t-shirt you're wearing or, or, or a top. So even though it's not it's not the most enjoyable pattern to knit, I mean, it's it's there's nothing wrong with the pattern, the pattern is fine, um, but it's, it's a bit boring. <laughs> and also there's quite a few stitches, which means that the, the rounds are really long and the yarn, which is alpaca silk by uh, Sunness, uh, is is lovely and soft, but it it like I think I said the last time, it really uh, discolors your fingers, and somehow that is just creates this bit yucky feeling. Now, any I have even washed the yarn, um, and it still discolors. Um, it lets off dye when you're when you're knitting with it. So some something about that just makes my skin creep a little bit. Um, so, so that's why this is. I'm, I've used this as my work knitting. I have it lying next to my to my work uh, desk, and when there's a bit of a break or something that I'm, maybe I'm attending a meeting or something, then I I will knit on this. So it's not progressing that fast, but there's no rush. So, <laughs> so two projects that both have their kind of issues. They're not the kind of love, love, love projects but they will be nice in the end. But then I do have a love project as well. But I think this will be a bit difficult to show because it's on a short needle and it's really long. <laughs> but let me just show you this scrunched up thing. Well, you can't really see much. But this is a shawl. Um, it is called Liquid, and it's also by Anna Johanna. Um, but I found this in a magazine, actually. It was first published in a magazine. It's also available on Ravelry, I think. Um, and it, it's, it's a, a sort of crescent-shaped shawl. And it's a bit sort of irregular in that it has short rows on the one end, which means that the pattern, the sort of this lace pattern, which uh, comes at intervals, um, is it, it kind of stretches longer on the one end than on the other, if, if you get that, what I'm trying to say. Very difficult to explain and to show. But, but anyway, it's been a really, really fun and very addictive project. So I have whipped this up in, in just a few weeks. And I'm almost at the end now. Um, and now I'm showing it to you upside down, I realize, because this is the sort of the top edge and then this the crescent is forming down there where my needle is. So this is how it goes, really. And the yarn is adorable. It's lovely. It's Ushitita, 
and uh, Merino Singles, one I also picked up at TT2 last summer, and I love it. It's called Cosmia, which is a, a, some, a flower, uh, and it, I think that's a really fitting name for it. And um, I actually bought the yarn and thought, uh, chose the design because I have a very pink uh, summer jacket. Oh, sorry about my computer. Um, that I planned this to go. I planned for this to go with that jacket. And I think, oh dear. <laughs> sorry about that. That was snow falling down. <laughs> Outside my window. <laughs> we are in winter and today is um, there is snowfall and now it was just sorry. <laughs> okay, yep, so my liquid shawl for my spring and summer jacket. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. And then my last. Um, um, or my latest cast on is something that I actually started last night and this is also for my husband the one who doesn't like things prickly so now he is getting a little lopey sweater <laughs> and this is how far I've got well this is supposed to be an outdoor an outdoor a garment so I'm thinking that he can wear stuff underneath it and I'm sure that will be fine this is called Kuldaboli, very weird name. Um, um, I can't access the name of the designer right now, but I will put it in the description below. Um, so it's an Icelandic design. I didn't want to go with the Redri or the very sort of typical, the ones that you know everybody makes, because I'm, I'm I'm kind of I I don't want to be mainstream, so I wanted to choose something that was just a little bit different and that maybe wasn't so. So common or so that didn't have that many makes on Ravelry and this was it and it's called Kulda Bali which I think means something like very uh, uh, cold and um, freezing weather and this is this is worn to combat that kind of thing so I have these uh, it's four colors uh, the base color and three um, three uh, contrast colors and they are very sort of basic um, neutral black or charcoal gray and a lighter gray and a blue and then this this very very sort of pale gray almost snow white it has yeah it has a bit it reminds me of snow actually so this is my first Icelandic sweater. It's my first uh, time knitting with Letlopi ever. And so far, I think it's looking really nice. And it's, it, it's progressing very fast because I have large needles, four and a half millimeter. So yeah, watch this space for more on that one. All right. Those were all of my knitted things that I wanted to show you. And if sewing is not your thing, then thank you for joining me this far and I will see you uh, next time. But if you'd like to hear a little bit about uh, my sewing uh, journey, then I'm just gonna say a little bit about that at this point. Um, I have not, I am not a natural born sewist. <laughs> Well, I don't know if anybody is, but, but for me, I did know. I did learn to sew and use a sewing machine and stuff when I was fairly young. And I remember um, at school, like um, in my teens, I, I did, we have uh, crafts or slide as, as we call it in, in school here. And I did, I, I actually took crafts as my, as an optional, optional subject in in, in junior high and um, did so quite a bit then but that was the 80s nothing was fitted you weren't thinking too much about you know um, the dressmaking construction as such you just you know you just made 
joggers and sweatshirts and whatnot. Um, so, and, and since then I haven't really sewn and my experiences with sewing have often been that, oh, you know, it doesn't, you fail at some point, you, something goes wrong, it, the fit is not right, the pattern pieces don't match up, There's, there are too many uh, steps that can cause frustration <laughs> in the sewing process. Uh, so sewing for me has been like, it would be good to know, but no, I don't have the patience, I don't have it, you know, it makes my skin itch uh, to, to think about all the problem solving that's involved in sewing. Um, until, as I maybe said just now, I recently, when I have been thinking a lot about shape and about um, how my body shape does not really correspond to to the clothes that you, are, you found, find in stores, which has the effect, again, that I don't really buy clothes. And I pretty much spent the last decade or so wearing training clothes because no any <laughs> any other clothes they just leave me. trying to shop for clothes for my self has just left me so disappointed and so frustrated and so in the end i came to the conclusion well if i want to have good clothes that look good on me and are well fitted on my body i'm not gonna find them in stores so i need to make them myself and then I have to learn to sew or, or pick up the sewing that I know and um, refine it. Learn how to, to deal with things like fit and shape and uh, construction. Um, and of course today, I mean, the, the YouTube, uh, the internet is full of inspiration and of knowledge and of tutorials. And there are um, pattern companies that hold your hand throughout the sewing process and all of this I kind of gradually discovered during the last year as well when I started watching uh, some podcasts or some vlogs there are lots of sewing vloggers out there um, and and slowly but surely my inspiration and my confidence grew thinking well maybe I could do this as well and um, so I have started sewing a little bit and I'm, I'm really inspired by the possibilities of actually creating a um, me-made wardrobe and um, partly because you know just because you know we crafty people we like to have things to be me made so that is one aspect of it of course but but also the fact that i can make things that really fit um, so so that is that is where i'm at in in my my sewing journey and there are still a lot of things that i i need to to learn and to master and i feel that i so far i'm i'm perhaps mostly practicing um in making stuff but i have ma managed to make um quite a few items that i that i'm wearing and that i'm happy with and uh, and i'm excited to make more um so i thought you know if if perhaps you have the same struggle <laughs> with with uh, clothes and with perhaps your your body confidence and the you know the frustration of not finding things um, in the stores that fit you and that you feel good looking in i i would strongly encourage you to to um, research the world of sewing because there is so much more out there uh, today than for instance, when I learned to sew, when uh, today there are so many people there out there holding your hand. So, um, so um, I thought that I would just show you a, a few things that I made. Uh, and I'm not going to make this into a sewing um, podcast. And I don't think I will probably not bring up sewing in every in every episode by by any means. But because this is a part of my my crafting journey right now. I thought I'd show you some, a few things. Let me just rearrange some stuff here. I can put this on a hanger. This is a hoodie that I made just recently. It's not quite finished. I have a couple of sort of top stitching things to do. Um, but here we go. Well, 
just where do I go here? <laughs> um, so this is the uh, what was it called? The Stanton, the Stanton hoodie. I think it's by a pattern company. The pattern is from a company called Cashmerette. A very good pattern that helps you a lot with with everything you need to to know about everything that needs to be pieced together. Um, so this is just a basic basic hoodie without a zip, but with these pockets on the front, and then it has these details like like the shoulder sort of details here, um, and then it also has sort of the seam across the back. Which are mostly for decorative, but also for, uh, for shaping. Um, like this seam here does a bit of shaping at the front, which is very clever. And then it has a hood, um, which I've lined with a, a different fabric than than the, the the sweatshirt thing that I've used for for this one. So a, a basic a basic everyday um, garment. But it's great to be able to make that kind of thing yourself. And this is a really lovely, lovely sweatshirt thing uh, fabric. And as you can probably tell, I had quite a few green or bluish tealy things, and I have deeply fallen into the teal hole. Pretty much everything I buy <laughs> when it comes to fabrics has is green or bottle green or teal. So I really need to kind of um but it's just love the color. I love the color, so <laughs> But I need to kind of, I need to start finding matching uh, things to match with it because otherwise I'll be the green woman going around. Everything I will be wearing is green. So yeah. And now I'm just going to take a quick break and get some of the other things. Okay, so a couple of other things that I've made is this... Uh, dress here which is the same fabric that I used inside the hoodie um, or the hood in the hoodie um, and this is just a basic uh, um, jersey dress oh this was difficult to show like that maybe a bit fitted on, on the top and then sort of with a uh, a skirt that just a-lined a-lined skirt oh, hard to show um, now this I think I think this uh, fabric this floral print is really lovely um, but when I'm wearing this it, it looks a bit like I'm wearing a nightgown and I was what, what <laughs> why is that what 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 happened <laughs> um, and I think what I need to do to combat that feeling is to shorten the sleeves. It has now it now has long sleeves and somehow that pulls pulls the whole thing down. So I think I want to shorten the sleeves and make them three quarter lengths sleeves instead. And then that will look much more um, stylish somehow and more like a dress and not like a nightgown. <laughs> Other than that I think this was a really easy and, and nice um, nice um, fabric to work with and it's from, it's printed in Finland. It's by a company called Ommelinen. And there are lots and lots of companies, uh, yarn, online yarn stores in yarn. <laughs> you see, I'm programmed to say yarn um, fabric stores um, in, in Finland, especially ones that sell um, jersey and printed, printed jersey fabrics. So there is a good supply of, of uh, good quality fabrics available right now. So that was the um, jersey fabric. The pattern was from an October magazine. magazine. Uh, October is a Finnish pattern maker with a magazine that comes out maybe six times a year, something like that. And, and then we have this, um, which is not green actually, which is also ochre, which is a color that I'm kind of experimenting a little bit with. I, I like it, but I don't always feel that it looks that good on me. But I'm trying to find the right kind of hue that would look good on me because I really think it's it's a, a very versatile color. It goes with a lot of things. Um, so I made this, this top, which is the Vera top, uh, by a pattern company called 
forget-me-not patterns. And this has this these sort of feature sleeves, these really uh, what they call bishop sleeves, with this big, big sort of um, gathering here at at and then this long cuff. Now I'm not too sure about whether I like that. I wanted to try it because it was a fun, fun sort of feature to to try, but. Um, I semi like it. I find that it it also has a little bit the effect. Um, I'm gonna put that down because my armlet's tired from holding it up. I find that that also has a little bit the effect that it draws your eyes eye towards your arm um, and down which lands then right at the widest part of your hip, which kind of draws your eye to that point. Where perhaps you'd rather have your eyes, your your focus a bit higher up, up, to the slimmest part of your body. As you see, I've been thinking a lot about these shape issues. So that's one of the effects of, of that kind of, of sleeve that it creates a lot of focus on this part, and when that hangs down, that becomes very full. Um, but you don't learn these things unless you try. So. I, I cherish every experience that I've made with sewing and I, I've, I'm really learning a lot and it's a lot of fun. Um, now, one of the things, of course, with sewing is that you can't unravel, you can't rip things. If you've cut into the fabric and you've sewed it up, there's no going back. Um, so what you can do if, if something really goes terribly wrong and you can it's unwearable is you'll have to think of another purpose for that fabric um, underwear maybe a top sleeveless top uh, are options that you could if you want to recreate something with the fabric that you've already used um, but that is not perhaps as an appealing idea as unraveling with yarn somehow Okay, <laughs> so those are some of my thoughts and, and, and some of, of the insights that I've, I've gained during this journey through crafts, which I think is um, the spice of life. <laughs> I love that there are so many things that you can learn and that you can, uh, where you can develop your skills and, and uh... okay, but now I've chatted way too much and way too long. Um, if you would consider cons subscribing, I would be really happy or give me a thumbs up or give me a comment about what you thought about some of this content. Um, and I will see you next time. Keep crafting. Bye.